Hi Anna, my name's Zaid Khan. I'm from Stoke-on-Trent and I work in a food manufacturing company. I just want to talk a little bit about the divisions they've caused within the UK. They've, um, we've been subject to this fear mongering for two decades now. Yeah, since September, uh, the 11th of September, the 9-11 since the Patriot Act, which nobody took any notice of because it didn't concern them, it concerned us Muslims, where they brought in laws where we were stopped and searched without reason. We could have people taken out of our homes, arrested for seven days, 14 days, 21 days without any question asked. And without any, you know, just with the suspect, by suspecting them to do something, they could have, you know, didn't have to do anything. It's just a suspicion. We've been going through this now for two decades, and I can feel exactly how you lot feel. When I say you lot, we are part of you lot. We are the people. And we need to come together. The only thing we need to do is we need to take out a few things that have been embedded in our brains. One is the racial tension. We've got Asians, Muslim, Islamophobia, Muslim, hate, people hate Muslims because just because they're wearing the clothes that I'm wearing today because it's our Eid and Asian clothes. Our women are covering our faces so they get hate, abuse, when they go to the town. We need to eliminate the racial, we need to eliminate the stereotype that we've got embedded in our brains. As soon as we eliminate these few things and then we all become the people, then we don't see anybody different from another person. A lot of people, I mean, quite a few friends of mine have been arrested without any, just suspicion have been arrested, taken away for months, away from the families, and then released without any charge. Um, this is what I wanted to talk about. My friend, uh, the thing, we've been awake since 9-11. The thing that, we're just a human, just like you. I work, my father fought in the Second World War, he fought with the British Army. He was based in Burma. He fought for this country. You probably wouldn't know that because they don't teach you things like this in history. They just teach you what they want you to know. That's why the division has been implemented from when we were at school. Um, they just want you to know certain things, just what they want you to know. Um, I just want to give you a little example of... Um, a little example you need to see the bigger picture don't just see what's on your 40 inch 50 inch 60 inch TV you need to see what's beyond that I'll just give you an example of stereotype and racial what we've got embedded in our heads we need to get rid of just imagine a guy a bold a bold guy white full of tattoos, is running towards this black woman pushing a pram. And he's running towards him in a, you can tell by his face, he's red, really with anger. And then I'm gonna stop it there. You just imagine that picture, what you see on the TV, and then they can just tell you anything with that picture. But the reality is when the Camera zoom out and you see the whole picture. The picture is this. The man running towards this black woman is trying to save her. He looks up in the sky and there's a blokes with a rope with a piano in the air and that piano and she's about to walk under that piano. And that bloke who we stereotype as a racist bloke with tattoos and a skinhead, which isn't which he isn't, but we've just had that embedded in our heads to stereotype people he was there running towards this black woman to save her in case that piano fell 
but we don't see the bigger picture we just see what they want us to see what they want us to know the thing is the terrorist attacks we've been i mean since 9 11 i've been awake i've been trying to raise my voice so have all the muslim community has been we've been trying to raise our voices but we haven't had a platform we haven't had any outside help we've all been isolated the muslim community we've been attacked when we go shopping there was an incident where a woman was walking towards an underground station she was at the top of the stairs and now you know how how many stairs there is to get into the underground a bloke came up behind her, this was caught on camera. A bloke came up behind her and he kicked her all the way down them stairs. She suffered a fractured head, fractured ribs and a broken arm. But the media will never ever show you that. But this is what we go through on a daily basis. And I do feel your pain. I know what you are going through at the moment with the scaremongering tactics. Because that's exactly what we've been going through for a long time. If we can all get together, erase this racism erase this erase this stereotype what we've got for we've got for english people english people have got for us we need to get rid of this we need to come together we need to be we are the people not we are the problem that's what the government are trying to cause is it's trying to cause the problem between us but we aren't the problem we are the people we are stronger than them if we stick together but they don't want us to stick together they want us to be divided like their motto is divide and conquer that's exactly what they're doing i know a lot of people aren't just asleep because people who are asleep always wake up but these people are in a coma and they're in a very very deep coma we need to wake them people up they're in a coma i know it's going to be hard but the only way we can do it is if we come together as one, as the people. We are the people. And why it's hard to wake them up? Because why it's hard to wake these people up is because for these a lot of these people it's easy. As I was saying. I'm sorry if the video keeps getting jutted around because people keep walking in the room and I have to keep pausing it and I'm playing it again. Anyway, I was saying why it's hard for these people to wake up is because for these a lot of these people it's easy to believe the lie than it is to accept the truth. They don't want to accept that their government are lying. So it's easy to believe their lies than it is to accept the truth. And this is the time where lies are, be, are believed lies are believed and the people who speak the truth are put down and thought to be conspiracy theorists that's the way they put them down we need to come together I keep repeating this because I can't stress enough how much we need to come together to to f overcome this evil and if we're going to just sit around blaming each other and then we're just all wasting the time we might as well just sit around and wait for the vaccine because the vaccine is coming and we might just as well take it sitting down and we're not doing this for ourselves we're doing it for the generations to come our children our grandchildren we need to stick together and we need to come together As a Muslim community, we did stick together. We were a really close-knit community. We knew what the government were doing to us, but we, we didn't have a say, we didn't have a platform, we didn't have people sticking up for us. We were all alone, isolated. Like I've already said in my video, we had people taken out of their homes, rested without anything, split up, family split up. We were getting abused when we used to go shopping, town. My kids used to see racist people just swearing at us, terrorists. And we all knew that these terrorist attacks, they were all just like this. Coronavirus, which is all, in my eyes, it's not real. 
It was just a phantom terrorist organization, which that's why it's gone on for so long, because it's just a phantom. Make belief with make belief, a fairy tale. You can just let your imagination run wild and do whatever you want, but that's exactly what this is. That's why I'm so glad that people are waking up, that people are coming together, communities are coming together. But we need to eliminate the two, three things, what I've just said, racism, stereotype, and Islamophobia. We <clears throat> eliminate them, and then we become the people. And that's what we need. Thank you, Anna. <clears throat> and keep up the good work. We needed someone like you. Thank you.